Hello everybody, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Today I'm continuing the study of the book of Acts, and I'm going to start today with chapter 21, verse 1. Now, if you have not seen all the previous studies on Acts, I really hope you will go back and watch this study from the beginning. Uh, all the previous chapters are uploaded and available on my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher. So today, beginning with chapter 21, verse 1, And it came to pass that after we were gotten from them and had launched, we came with a straight course unto Cus, and the day following unto Rhodes, and from thence unto Patara. And finding a ship sailing over unto Phoenicia, we went aboard and set forth. Well, I think the significant thing that uh, is, could be helpful is the word, use of the word we. Um, if you go back to the very first video, the introduction to the book of Acts, um, I made the point that the, the author of the book of Acts is Luke, who also was the author of the Gospel of Luke. And Luke is a historian and a traveling companion to, to Paul. So many times uh, he writes uh, about uh, his observations um, about Paul and Peter and, and, uh, and his, the accounts that were told to him by other people about basically the book of Acts is a, a history of the first 30 years of the church. But often we find the use of the word we and that just is um, uh, certainly lets us know that Luke is writing as an actual uh, participant, that he is there uh, involved in all these activities himself as a companion of Paul. So here we are in the first missionary journey of Paul. This is about over 20 years uh, after Pentecost. It's, uh, it's about uh, 14 or 16 years no, pardon me, about 14 or 15 years now uh, after Paul's conversion. It's, a, it's about uh, 10 years after the um, conversion of Cornelius and his family, the first Gentile believers that, that Peter preached to. And so uh, a lot of time has passed, and it's helpful to keep that in mind as we go along. Um, now, verse 3, Now, when we had discovered Cyprus, we left it on the left hand and sailed into Syria and landed at Tyre, for there the ship was to unlaid her burden. And finding disciples, we tarried there seven days. So already there are believers or disciples. There's a difference between a believer and a disciple, by the way. The best example I can give you is that uh, you have... Um, um, John, the Apostle John, he's a believer and he's a disciple. Uh, he, he was a follower of Jesus. He sat at his, his feet and learned and studied from him as his student. And uh, um, so Jesus was uh, not only his savior, but he was also his Lord and teacher. But he, he tried to do what Jesus, live according to how Jesus instructed him to live. He learned and tried to apply the teachings of Jesus to his life. This is discipleship. Uh, but a, uh, And he was also a believer in that Jesus is the Savior God, and salvation comes as a free gift from Jesus to all who put their faith in him. So John is an example of a believer and a disciple. But we also have like Judas, who betrayed Jesus. Uh, he was a disciple. He was there during all this... Um, three and a half years of Jesus' ministry, and he, we could say that he's a disciple, but he never was a believer, according to what we find in the scriptures. Um, and then we have, um, I guess, an example of a, a believer and not a disciple would be Nicodemus. Uh, Nicodemus, in the third chapter of John, uh, in his meeting with Jesus, we see that he meets with Jesus privately. He never joined Jesus's, uh, you know, uh, um, 
uh, group of disciples. He never followed her around and, uh, and uh, set it aside to learn uh, openly. He, he never um, was uh, openly identified himself as a, as a believer in Jesus. But we, we do know that he did believe and that he was saved. Um, another example would be Joseph of Arimathea. These were like secret believers that did not openly follow Jesus as disciples. So it is possible to be a believer and not a disciple, and be, to be a disciple and not a believer. And of course, the, I, I, the first thing we must do is become believers. That's how we receive our salvation. And then uh, once we believe, are we going to attempt to follow the teachings of Jesus uh, uh, as disciples uh, to someone who wants to uh, not only follow what he taught, but, but um, work? In, in, in Christian ministries serving Jesus in some capacity. That is the ideal, to be a believer and disciple. Um, now we got uh, verse 5, and when he had accompanied, no, and when he had accomplished those days, we departed and went our way, and they all brought us on our way with wives and children till we were out of the city and we kneeled down on the shore and prayed. Let me read verse 5 in the Amplified. I, I read all the time in the KJV first. Sometimes it's helpful to look at another translation. The one I, I like to look at is the Amplified. Verse 5 of the Amplified says, When our days there came to an end, we left and proceeded on our journey, while all of the disciples with their wives and children escorted us on our way until we were outside the city. After kneeling down on the beach and praying, uh, we told one another goodbye. All right, well, there's really nothing uh, uh, really uh, new and that I, I've learned from reading the Amplified in that case. But what I was looking for was this reference to wives and children, if it had elaborated. See, the Amplified Translation, what does the word amplify mean? It means you expand on it, you expound on it. And that's what I'm doing. I'm amplifying. I'm commenting. Uh, this is a verse-by-verse -verse commentary on the book of Acts. And uh, you're getting my thoughts. And I'm, I'm reading the verse and amplifying, trying to add more of... of my personal insights of what I've learned and what I believe about these these scriptures. So, uh, with the Amplified, sometimes it helps me, but there's no further reference about uh, the wives and children. I'm, it, possibly, Luke had wives and children. I don't know, it doesn't say, but it refers to, um, and they brought all of us on our way with wives and children. So, the disciples, they had including the wives and their children. Did Luke have wives and children? I don't know of anything in the record that would tell us one way or the other. Verse 6 in the KJV, And when we had taken our leave one of another, we took ship, and they returned home again. And when we had finished our course from Tyre, uh, we came to Ptolemais, and saluted the brethren and abode with them one day. Uh, and the next day, we that were of Paul's company, so see, this is another way of understanding that the writer, Luke, is referring, using the word we, and, and he clarifies that we were of Paul's company. So he was uh, in the company of Paul. And uh, much of the book of Acts is written is, 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 is not only uh, based upon Luke's uh, research, as he says in the first chapter, how he carefully studied this out, and, and uh, he was writing this as a as a record that he carefully researched. But also, much of this is uh, Luke's uh, eyewitness testimony of these events. Um, and the next day, we we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea. And we entered into the house of Philip, the evangelist. Now, could this Philip be the same Philip that we uh, we talked about uh, uh, earlier, who was uh, 
Philip, who, who spoke to the Ethiopian eunuch. Uh, I suppose it probably was. Probably was not only Philip the Evangelist, but maybe it was even Philip the Apostle, one of the original twelve apostles. Uh, and we entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. Uh, and as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. Uh, now, why is it necessary to mention that they, the four daughters were virgins and they were, they prophesied? So they had the gift of prophecy and they were virgins. And what is the connection? I, I'm not really sure that, uh, uh, is it, should we assume then that once a woman ha has sex and is no longer virgin status, that, that somehow the, their ability to be a prophet now is is diminished or or uh, no, it's not possible. No, I wouldn't think so. And I think there's plenty of references to uh, prophetesses uh, that uh, that are, are older, and it doesn't say that they're virgins. So virginity is not a a, a required uh, attribute of a prophet. Uh, but here's a prophet. It says, a, in, from Judea, a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he had come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. So he is a real prophet because the scripture says a certain prophet named Agabus. Uh, not to be confused with some of the people we've, uh, we've learned about in earlier chapters, there were false prophets uh, that Paul, was, uh, Paul had exposed. But Agabus, a real prophet, he, and he prophesies that Paul uh, is going to be um, in, in Jerusalem suffer at the hands of the Jews, they, they will hand him over to Gentiles. And uh, so this is a, not only a prophecy of what's going to happen, but a warning to Paul. And of course, if he prophesies it, it means that it happen, it's going to happen. Nothing's going to change it from happening. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a real prophecy. It would be, a, 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 oh, here's something possible that could happen unless you change. No, this is, this is, it says, thus saith the Holy Ghost. When you say, when we, when we say it is written, then it's irreversible. Uh, when we say, thus saith the Lord, then it's, it's uh, established. It's, nothing's going to change it. Verse 12, and when we heard these things, both we and they of that place, besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. So they're trying to convince Paul not to go to Jerusalem, but, you know, if it's written or if it's uh, uh, established by thus saith the Holy Ghost, then it's not going to change. You could argue with Paul all you want, but nothing's going to change this fact because uh, the, the, the future was uh, recorded right here. Um, Verse 13, Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. So they don't want him to go to Jerusalem because of this prophecy. And Paul tells them, Look, you, you, are you trying to break my heart by... Uh, by uh, trying to persuade me not to go to Jerusalem. It says, what mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? He says, I'm not only prepared to be bound. Bound would be to, okay, you lose your freedom. You're, you're bound and jailed, imprisoned. This is what he knew uh, the, the prophecy really meant. 
And but he said, I'm not only willing to be bound or in prison, but I'm willing to die for the for the name of Jesus. Um, verse 14. And when he would not be persuaded, we ceased saying, The will of the Lord be done. Uh, let me read for this portion in the Amplified. See how it phrases it. Um, I'll start with verse 10. As we were staying there for some time, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea, and coming to see us, he took Paul's wide band belt sash and bound his own feet and hands and said, This is what the Holy Spirit says. In this same way, the Jews in Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this band and they will hand him over to the Gentiles, the pagans. Now, when we had heard this, both we and the local residents began pleading with Paul, trying to persuade him not to go to Jerusalem. Then Paul replied, What are you doing, weeping and breaking my heart like this? For I am ready not only to be bound and imprisoned, but even to die at Jerusalem for the name of of the Lord Jesus. And since he would not be dissuaded, we stopped pleading and fell silent, saying, The Lord's will be done. Okay, so that's the end of verse 14. This is a good place to stop for today. I'll continue with verse 15 next time. Thank you for watching. I look forward to your comments. Bless you in the name of our great Savior God. Jesus Christ.